Okay, welcome to another video and today we've got one that I'm hoping to be quite an interesting little look and a change of pace from some of the other distributions that we're quite used to checking out on this channel. So RLX OS is a brand new distribution which isn't based on anything so it's an independent distribution and it's an immutable one. So I think we'll read a little bit about it and then we won't waste no time, we'll jump straight into it and see how it all works. So it's 100% open source and forkable and free to use for both personal and commercial users. And then we have the rock solid immutable base so you'll always be on the safe side if you break your system and want to reset your system that is super easy with rlx os so some of the features that make using rlx os unique from other distributions are the virtual assistant the immutable system and extensible package manager so rlx os package manager apt ctl uses modules to handle package management its functionality can be increased by adding more plugins or modules and then we have source language so we have our own homegrown programming language named source or src and again it's completely built from scratch and not based on any other distribution the system is portable so it boots from a single system image file just like a live boot and saves unique cache onto the hard disk multiple versions of system images can reside together on the same partition and you can select which version to choose from your boot menu so very interesting so as far as your additional applications it appears that it puts app images first which will work very well for a system like this but it also has support for flatpak and snaps they have just a single iso currently available which is using gnome as a desktop environment and it has a size of 1.3 gb with that being said let's jump into the live environment and get this installed and here we are in the live environment which is looking very nice but we'll check out the look and feel once we are fully installed now we are going to be installing this natively so as per usual you can skip the installation with the timestamps down below but as it's a new sort of installation you might want to stick ahead and see how it all works so it does appear it's going to be using its own installation process so welcome to rlx os installation requires a free partition to install rlx os click the partition button to manage your disk partitions and that is going to go ahead and open up gparted so we're going to drop to a sort of a spare drive and we're going to right click now i'm going to create two partitions one is a fat32 and then the other is an ext4 file system so we're going to go new and i'm just going to drop that to 300 mb for the fat32 partition click ok and add and now i'm just going to use all of the remaining space for the ext4 partition which will be our root partition so we're just going to leave that like that press the little tick there to apply the changes and then we should be good to go so now that we've created our partitions we're going to press next and go to the next step so it's one it wants us to choose the root partition so the one we just created is dev sda2 so we're going to click next so installer failed to find the efi partition but we did create one right about there so we'll select that to be our efi partition and next okay so that's it i guess user account creation will come in the first steps when you first boot up so I'll pause the video here while this installs and we'll be back in just a moment. Right, that was insanely fast, perhaps the fastest installation I've seen of a Linux distribution. Pretty much under a minute there, so let's reboot and check out our freshly installed RLX OS. So we've just booted off disk for the first time and we're going to choose our language and then create a user account and then we can start to see how this all works. So I need English United Kingdom and next. English UK is indeed the layout. I'm going to disable location services. Time zone is correct, and I'm not going to worry about any online accounts for the moment. And here's where we can now create our user account and password. Okay, everything is done, and we can now start to use RLX OS. So we've got a little welcome tool here, so we'll run through this to get to know the basics, and then we'll start having a run through and seeing how we go. So welcome to RLX OS. Thanks for giving a try of the initial release. Next. So this is just telling us the interface. So I do believe it's using a sort of dash to panel GNOME extension. I'll be interested to see which version of GNOME we're actually running underneath all of this. We'll check that out in a moment as well. So applications, RLX OS provides native support for app images. Very cool. And a dedicated market from where you can download your favorite apps. Okay, interesting. No installations required, just download and run. So just put the apps in the applications folder in your home directory to integrate apps with your system. And then we have Bazaar, let's click that. So I guess this is their own marketplace for their app images, and that's opening up in GNOME Web. So it appears it's only got the one app image for now, but we'll, uh, we'll go through that in just a moment as well. And then it has the app image home and app image hub. Okay, next. Update. So updating RLX OS system is as simple as downloading and installing applications in RLX OS. Okay. 
instead of decompressing system into your root disk, RLXOS will boot directly from the compressed system image. To update your system, just copy the updated system image from the official website. Interesting, and then update your Grub configuration. You can boot any version from Grub at any time. Okay, that's a very interesting way of doing things. Next up, we then have the help and support with some links to their social sort of media and Discord. And then we have a lot more yet to come. So it's not yet just another Linux distribution. Our aim is to do a lot more. Below are some upcoming projects that can be included in RLX OS. So RLX Bot, which is the um, virtual assistant. So it doesn't appear that that's yet ready. SRC, which is their sort of language health. So a system health monitor that inspects on system health. And then PKG UPD. So a more advanced and extensible package manage that is capable to reproduce RLXOS custom redistributable system from a single recipe file. Okay, very cool. Is that the last step? It is indeed. So I think the first order of business is going into the about section of the GNOME control center and seeing what versions of the things we are currently using. So RS name is RLXOS 0.1.0. Right, so the GNOME version is a slightly older version of GNOME at GNOME version 3.36.5. And the default windowing system is actually Wayland. Okay, pretty cool. So I think what we'll do first of all is just go through how the desktop's set up and then we'll try out installing some app images and see how this package manager works and just see how we go. So like we said, it's got the dash to panel GNOME extension at the bottom with your application spread in the middle, which I do actually quite like. And then we have things like your system tray, etc. We have a show all applications button. And then we have just the sort of standard get into your overview where you can search for any application, hit enter and launch the application. And then we have the workspaces to the right, as of course we are using an older version of GNOME and we don't have any of the new changes that made its way into GNOME 40. So let's go into all applications and see what applications we actually have installed in the base install. So we have the SSH server and VNC server browsers, GNOME calculator, characters, cheese for managing our webcams, so it does have Dconf Editor and your default email client is Evolution, which I actually think is the best email client to use on a GNOME based system. We then have the extensions application, files, which is of course going to be Nautilus, and we'll see how everything's themed in just a moment. GPI to manage our disk partitions, which is what we use in the installation process. Image viewer, logs, music, notes. I quite like this icon theme. Well, um, I'm not sure what it is. Remina for remote desktop viewings, settings, shot well, system monitor, we have the terminal and then our text editor. We then have to do tweaks, videos, weather and web. So not a whole lot installed out of the box. So let's jump straight into tweaks and see what this theming is because I do quite like it. So in appearance, it's using the Quaggle wind light theme for the applications and it's using pretty much that for every other part as well as your icons, etc. Now, do we have any other themes installed out of the box? So we have all of the sort of variations of the Quaggle theme there, as well as Adwater high contrast and high contrast inverse. And for icons, we then have just the dark variation of that same icon theme. So if we open up our file manager, I do believe this has got one of those sort of like embedded images in the actual application windows. So kind of like some mountains there, but it does look quite nice with that theming. So the icon theme is very nice and the actual window seems pretty decent. And can we go to the dark version and see what that looks like as well? There we go. So I probably prefer the dark theme, but I don't think I would keep it on this theme particularly myself because I'm not a massive fan of having this sort of image in our file manager. But all in all, I do think everything looks quite nice and they've done a pretty decent job of the default theming and icons. Let's close that off and then check out what extensions we have. So we know we have dashed a panel at the bottom. And we also have application menu, horizontal workspaces, native window placement, places status indicator, user themes, window list, windows indicator, and in the window navigator. So on the website, they do have full documentation and they have some post installation steps, which we'll quickly run through now. So first up to do an update, we're going to use apt CTL and updates. So let's copy that and open up our terminal emulator. I'm just going to paste that over there and see how this all works. So it's going to ask you for your pseudo password. Okay, so it's syncing RLX package, syncing core, and our system is completely up to date. So while we've got this terminal open, let's type in apt, no app CTL, and see what options we have. So we have install, remove, info, depends, sync, update, list, search, hash, and trigger. So let's do a quick list and see how much app, uh, packages we actually have available as it currently stands. So we're going to go apt 
app ctl and type in list so that's now going to generate a list of all the available packages so let's just have a quick scroll up and see if there's quite a lot in there or if there's still quite a few things that we're going to be wanting to have put into the actual package manager so it doesn't appear to have loads of stuff so i'd be interested to see if it has things like steam if not we're probably going to need to go ahead and use things like flatpak at the moment to install steam so let's quickly test the search function so app ctl search and we're now going to type in steam so that's generated no results so let's do the same with flatpak and see if it will find a flat pack and there we go so it has found flat pack so we'll install flat pack now and then we'll use that later on to install the steam flat pack application and make sure that's all working out of the box so we're going to go sudo app ctl install and flat pack and there we go so pretty simple stuff there we can see we've got the os tree stuff so it seems to all work on the fly so we should have flat pack ready to go now Perfect, so we'll install some Flatpak applications in just a moment. Now let's continue with the rest of these steps. So update the bootloader configurations, provides a very minimal configuration for system to boot. Updating the bootloader configuration helps the bootloader generate configuration files according to your system and other installed operating systems. So I don't need to do that, but if there was a new version available, we could download that ISO and then sort of extract it to where it tells us to and then I guess all we'd need to do is update Grub and then we can jump into that image from our Grub screen, which is quite interesting. So next up, we have package management. So like I said, first and foremost, the main sort of applications that's going to be using is the app images. So let's have a look. Let's click on app images. So app images doesn't need any package management schemes or package. So I'm wondering what is it, it's using behind the scenes to manage our app images. So I'm just going to type app and then tab and see what versions we've got. There we go. So it has app image D, which you'll be able to use to sort of sync it to all of the relevant folders, create a .desktop file, and then that way you can search for your app images from your application launcher or GNOME overview. Okay, let's close that off and keep moving. So below are some links where you can download app images. So we're going to use their version. But like I said in the beginning, there's not a whole lot on here yet. This is all very much new. So we're going to download their version of Firefox, which is version 89.0. And we're just going to sort of see how it manages it at the moment. So I'll pause the video here while this is downloading and come back once it's finished. So our Firefox app image is now downloaded from the app image store. So what we're going to do is just open it up in its current directory. And we're going to move it. So we're just going to go move or cut. And then we're going to go home. And we're going to create a folder called applications because I don't think there is one there by default. So we're just going to create a new folder, call it applications. And now we're going to move that app image into that folder. And now let's see what happens when we hit enter. Nothing. So at the moment, we're going to need to make it executable. So let's just press OK for now. Open in the terminal, chmod plus x, firefox.app. Now that should be green letting us know that it's executable. So now that we can close our terminal and we can double click that, and then that will now launch your app image. However, you don't want to always have to sort of double click in your applications folder to do that. But with app image D, it should have sort of synced things into our application launcher. If it hasn't done it yet though, all we're going to do is just run app image D in a terminal, and then that will go ahead and do it for us. So if we just type in app image D, hit enter. So it's now found our Firefox application and it's now going to sort of make all of the sort of .desktop file entries it needs to and we'll be able to find it in our application launcher. So now that that's done let's go back into our overview type in Firefox and we should now be able to launch the application straight from there where you'd expect it to and we can also pin that to our application launcher in dash to panel and now that it'll always be there ready for us to go and then we can set as our default web browser and let's just close it and make sure it's launching without any problems Perfect, so fairly simple stuff. And what App Image D would have done for us is created us a .desktop file in .local share and applications. And now every time it sort of integrates App Images into your system, you'll have a new sort of .desktop file here for each application. So as you can see, we have one for Firefox, and then that's just gonna launch it for you and integrate it into your system, and you can run the icons right from there. Very cool. So with the app CTL package manager, they do have this included in the um, post installation as well. So the configuration file will be read from configuration in Etsy appctl.conf. And this is your default configuration file. So we have a URL.source from GitLab, GitLab, 
We then have one from their own RLX package online. We then have database and then RLX packages in the modules. So now let's jump straight into Flatpak. So we've already installed Flatpak. So let's see if we can install a new Flatpak application. So you can either go to the Flatpak market below or simply use Flatpak to install. So we might need to add a repo. I'm not too sure. So let's check it out. So we're going to test this out using Steam. So I've got the command ready. So we're just going to copy that over into our terminal. Now, I'm not sure if we need to add the repo or not for Flathub, but we're about to find out. So we're going to hit enter. And there we go. So it has actually found it. So we've already got the um, sort of Flathub repository ready to go. So that does make things very handy. So let's press Y and let that run through the steps to install Steam for us. So as that's the first time we have run and installed something with Flatpak, we did need to do a reboot for things to appear in our sort of GNOME overview. But I do believe if we now type in Steam, there we go. So although they don't have a native package available for Steam and you do have to run it with Flatpak, you can use this to play your games in your Steam library. And they do actually make a point of this in their blog, which I've just seen directing you on how to install Steam on RLX OS. And like I say, you're going to be using Flatpak. And as you can see, Steam has launched absolutely fine without any issues on RLX OS. So we'll close that for now. I'm not going to worry about logging in. I just wanted to make sure that we could launch it and run Steam using the Flatpak version. Let's go back into the post installation steps and see if there's anything else left for us to do. So the next step is actually Snap. Now I'm not going to worry about installing Snap because I've already got App Images as the main way to sort of manage applications. And then we also have Flatpak as well. So I think we'll be good with just App Image and Flatpak. But of course, that's for you to decide which packaging format you prefer. So let's go to the next step if there is one. And that's it. That's everything in the sort of post installation guide for the package management. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is download a whole load of app images, make sure they're integrating within our system fine, and then we'll have a little play around with things and see how we do. So I've downloaded the GIMP app image with all of the plugins from the App Image Hub website, and I've also downloaded the Caden Live app image from the official Caden Live website, and I can use these to edit today's video on this very system. And we should have it all integrated in our, into our system now with App Image D. So if we go into our application launcher, type in GIMP, let's make sure that's launching. So I'm going to press no, because this is built into the app image for GIMP to integrate it. But we've already done that with app image, so I'm not going to worry about that for now. And we're going to permanently disable that for GIMP. So it should still be integrated into our system because we did it with app image D. That's just something that's built into this particular app image. So there we go. GIMP is now launching. Let's just do it once more to make sure it doesn't pop up with that same message that we just had. And there we go. So we can easily edit any images that we need to use using the app image version of GIMP. And we're now going to do the same for Caden Live. So we're going to go back into our GNOME overview, type in Caden Live, and there it is. Perfect. And if at any time you ever get any issues with sort of the icon theming, you can just go into the actual .desktop file and then configure the icon line yourself to get things running exactly how you want. But there you go. You've got a very usable system there with the sort of app image, flat packs, and um, optionally uh, snap as well if you want that to be installed on your system. But all in all, this is turning out to be a very interesting distribution. It's all very new at the moment, so I'll be very intrigued to see how this progresses further forward, especially when a new version is out and then we can test things out with the sort of installing a new version just by moving the ISO, which definitely sounds like a very interesting way to update your whole system. What I want to do now is see if we've got HTOP uh, included or if it's in the actual sort of repo with the package manager and see how much RAM we are using on a fresh install. So we're going to open up our terminal once more and we're going to type in HTOP. So we don't have HTOP installed, so we're going to use their app, their package manager called AppCTL. So first we're going to search for it with AppCTL search and just type in HTOP. So it will take a few seconds to generate any results. So it doesn't actually have HTOP installed out of the box, but we should have the GNOME system monitor. So I think what we'll do is we'll do a quick reboot and check how much RAM it's using. I do prefer using HTOP and I prefer the results HTOP gives you to system monitor. But for now, we'll just test it out with the GNOME system monitor. Let's just do a quick reboot and see how much RAM we're using. OK, so we've just booted back up and we've run the GNOME system monitor. So currently memory in use, we have 1.2 GB with a cache of around about 780 MB. Now you might notice we have no swap available whatsoever. So there's a few things that we could have done to get our swap going. During the initial install, we could have also created a swap partition with Gparted and then added that to our FS tab file. 
or we could also just create a swap file now if we wanted one and then add that to our fs tab file right so there appeared to be a bit of an issue creating a swap file it didn't quite want to work so what i've done instead is i've created a swap partition and as you can see right there we've added the swap partition to our fs tab file and that's working absolutely fine so as far as your shell the default shell it's going to be using is bash which is what i tend to just leave my distributions on but for those of you who like zsh now that is actually in the repo so you can go ahead and use appctl install to install zsh so i think that's where i'm going to wrap up with my first look of rlxos all in all though it definitely didn't disappoint so i was quite excited before checking it out and i remain as excited as i was beforehand i'm very interested to see what future versions have in offer especially with their sort of virtual assistant and things like that ready to go definitely worth checking out i like the fact that app images are put front and center as the main way to manage applications of course their app image store at the moment doesn't really have a whole lot in it apart from firefox but with like all things given enough time i'm sure there'll be a whole lot there for users to go ahead and download and integrate in their system for now as a fallback you can always go ahead and use the flat pack or snap packaging formats to fill in the blanks that currently aren't available as an app image or are in their native package manager and there are several other places to go ahead and install app images like app image hub etc and it's not too hard to create them yourselves either thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and if you've really enjoyed it you can consider supporting me on patreon join the discord there's a link in the description i'll see you on the next one Bye bye